In this video, I'll demonstrate how to perform a simple or one-way ANOVA. And in ANOVAs, in comparison to an independent t-test, we're going to be comparing three or more groups on a single numeric outcome. So in a situation in which you have more than two groups, uh, you can't perform an independent t-test because that will inflate the potential hypothesis testing error. So we have the ANOVA. Um, and the ANOVA is essentially a two-step process. Um, the first is called the omnibus test, and this is where we're going to determine if there is statistical significant uh, differences between the groups, um, but it won't tell us which groups are different from each other. So then we go on, move on to what's known as the post hoc test, and that's when we can determine the individual group differences that we might see. So in this example, we're going to compare a math score um, between three different groups. Uh, and these groups each receive a different type of instruction. And the score then is to determine if one of the different types of instructions produced a better math score on a standardized test than another. So we want to see if these three different instructional techniques are different from one another in producing a certain knowledge um, level for math. So our null hypothesis then would be um, that there will be no difference between the three groups on the mean math score. And then we're going to test that hypothesis, first using the omnibus test to see if there are differences somewhere among the three groups, and then secondarily using the post hoc test. If there is significance with the omnibus test, we will use the post hoc test to determine where those differences may be. So as you can see we, here, we've got one column that designates the group, um, you know, three different instructional techniques, group A, B, and C, and then we have our math scores here. Um, some of the same assumptions that we see in t-testing uh, hold here. This numeric outcome that we're comparing the groups upon, um, that's the dependent variable or the outcome that needs to be normally distributed. Um, and so we're going to screen that ahead of time to make sure it meets that assumption. So in order to run this analysis, we're going to find our analysis menu. And we can find the ANOVA table. And we're going to choose the first option, which is just the simple ANOVA. So the first thing we want to do is designate our dependent variable. And so in this case, that's going to be uh, the math scores. We'll click Confirm. And then our independent variable is going to be group. Again, we have three groups. You can have more than three groups. Um, but in this case, we have three different groups we want to compare. So we're going to choose group, select Confirm, and then select Calculate. And then uh, again, we, we're going to get an interpreted output provided for us that will give us a kind of a narrative description of the analysis. But we want to look at the raw output. So we're going to go to the view raw output. And then we're going to see our ANOVA table. And so again, you'll see um, based upon the formula for an F score, you'll see the sums of squares between, which is designated by the group, sum of squares within, which is designated as residuals. And then here's the actual F score associated with this comparison. So we're typically going to report that F score, but we're most interested in the p value associated with that F score. And as we can see here, we've got a very, very small p value. I've uh, got about 21 zeros in front of the 4. Um, so that's well below 0.05. So our omnibus test is showing significance. Now, we don't know which groups are different from each other yet, but we do know there are significant differences somewhere among those three groups. So we would be able to reject that null hypothesis and say there are significant differences um, somewhere among the three groups. We can also take a quick look here at the effect size. This uh, measure of effect size is known as the partial eta squared. Um, it's interpreted similarly to how we interpret Cohen's D, but there are different criteria for what's considered strong, moderate, or weak um, effect size. Um, in this case, a 0 0.471 would be considered a very strong effect size or a very large effect size. So we have a, a large magnitude of effect here. So that speaks a little bit to the, the clinical significance of the result that we might see. So now that we have significance at the omnibus test, we can move on to the post hoc test to determine where those differences might be. If we had non-significance here um, initially with the omnibus test, we would stop. We wouldn't move on to post hoc testing because there aren't any differences to find, uh, so we would then stop. But in our case, we have significance, so we can move on to the post hoc. 
The next table you'll see is the means table. So these are the group means for each of the three groups. And you can see the mean and standard deviation as well as the group size for each of the three groups. So as we can see here, numerically, their means are different from one another. But what we don't know is which, and we know there are significant differences somewhere among these three means, but we don't know which group is different from the other. So is group A different from B? Is it different from C? Is B different from C? And so on. So that's the next thing we want to look at. So what we're going to do here now is go to this last table. It's labeled post hoc comparisons. And what it does is it pairs up each group and compares the means to see if the difference between the means is statistically significant. And so what you'll see here in this column that's labeled M, this is the mean difference between each group. So if we look at group A and group B here on this top table, we can see that their means are 88 and 75 respectively. And then if we look at the mean difference here, if we subtracted 75.7 from 88.4, we'd end up with this 12.6. And so this is the mean difference between those two groups. And so in order to determine if that mean difference is statistically significant, we go over to the last column, which is our p-value here. As you can see, this value is much less than 0.05, so we can say that group A is statistically significant in its difference compared to group B. Uh, we can also look at the 95% confidence intervals of this mean difference, and one of the things that we look for is to see if this confidence interval crosses zero. And in this case, it does not. So we can see the confidence interval is actually 9.9 .9 to 15.2. So that means there's a 95% probability that in the, the general population, the mean difference we would see between these two groups would fall somewhere between these two values, 9.9 .9 to 15.2. But since it does not cross zero, that indicates to us that the difference that we're seeing in this sample is likely to be the same in the population. So this improves the clinical significance of this particular comparison. If the confidence intervals cross zero, um, for example, the lower limit might have been minus two, then that would indicate that there's weaker clinical significance and that the difference that we're seeing in our sample might not actually even be present in the population at large. And so we can look at the, our other two comparisons. We can see here group C to group B, a mean difference of 6.8. That is also statistically significant. And we can look at the confidence interval. Again, fairly large, but does not cross zero. And then the third comparison is group C to group A. We can see a mean difference of 5.7. Um, that is also statistically significant. And we have a mean uh, confidence interval, excuse me, of the mean difference, again, does not fairly large, but does not cross zero. So at this point, we can conclude that the, the type of instructional group that an individual was in, um, the math score produced from those groups were statistically significant in their difference to each other. So each group had a significantly different score compared to the other groups. And this magnitude of effect um, was large. Now, the next question becomes, well, which group had a better score compared to the others? Well, that's where we go to our mean table, and we can see that group A had the highest score of 88, followed by group C, and then followed by group B. So if you were to say, you know, which instructional type uh, produced the highest math score, then that would be group A. Um, but then we can also say that the scores produced compared to each, other, each group, there was a significant difference. So if you want to know which group did the best, it would be group A. Which group did the worst, it would be group B. How different were the groups from one another? They were all significantly different from each other. So uh, if you had a choice between the instructional technique for group A compared to group B, you would likely choose group A if it was available. And the same thing comparing it to group C. And then if you only had B and C to choose from, then you would likely choose group C because that produced a significantly different score compared to group B. So those are some of the comparisons and conclusions that we can make. Um, so there was a significant um, difference among the three groups. And each group was significantly different from the other group, with group A producing the highest score compared to group uh, B and C. And the magnitude of the effect is quite large.
So that produces some good clinical significance, and the fact that our confidence intervals do not cross zero also produces some good evidence of clinical significance. So we had statistical significance, and it appears we also have clinical significance. So hopefully that helps you understand a little bit better how to perform a one-way ANOVA, and good luck using this in your own research.